Welcome back, everyone. It's Michelle. I'm so glad you're here. This is the final part of our naturalist cabinet, and we're going to jump right in. Thanks for joining me. So here I am with my project. This was the project I had in mind. Yesterday's smaller one was a warm up. So what I have going on here is the same process, paper with the um, punched holes, and I lined the outside with the paper. And it was just, you'll see, it was just a, a $1.25 tray from, <clears throat> from the dollar store. Let me get this out. that my husband, um, just like the other one, made the holes. I sanded them. This is actually paper that's supposed to look like wood. So this isn't actually the finish of the box. The finish of the box is this, but this is actually paper you're looking at. Um, looks like this, it looks like wood. So now I am going to be doing the same thing I did. You can see this little tray didn't have the holes and it had these little stars punched out. I don't know what the tray is used for, some kind of little craft, but I liked the size. I liked that it was the right height. So I figured I'd jump ahead because not everybody needs to see all those steps again of me sanding and putting paper around the edge. And now I'm just going to do the decorating. I found a um, an encyclopedia from the 1800s. I think it's like 1870-something, 1880s. And there's a bolete, or a bolate. I never know how to say it, mushroom. Um, so I cut that out, and I put some paper on, made it the same size as the back, and I am going to start decorating the inside now. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to start with the exciting process of inking, and I'm going to be inking all around the pieces of paper that I cut out for the background and all the pieces of ephemera that will be laying on top of it. I want to say that yesterday's video was all about a one test tube box because I really felt like I needed to get the lay of the land before I tackled um, this bigger box. So right there you'll see a little mushroom that I fussy cut out. I stamped it first and then fussy cut out just like I'm going to do with these other pieces that were the Tim Holtz stamps, um, the field stamps that I've been using all along. This little butterfly came from the fairy book and what I really loved about it was the fact that it also had its name, the specimen name in the book. So that lends itself to being very consistent with a specimen box. And because I'm a real stickler for details, I really don't want the back of it just to be plain white, especially because it's a 3D box. I don't want, if you're looking from a strange angle, to just see white paper. So I've inked it and I put some script on there um, just so that it fits in and you know, it will look good from all angles. And what I'm, my goal is right here is to take all the little pieces of ephemera that I think will go really nicely in the background, ink them up to give them that vintage vibe, place them where I kind of think they will go, and then I'm going to have to do a trial run. I'm going to have to put the test tubes in and kind of move the, be fiddly with them, move them around until I'm happy with what their location is. It's tricky because if I stand the box up, they're going to fall to the bottom. So I can really only do this hoping that everything is close enough because obviously the, the test tubes aren't exactly in the right space because they can't rest in that bottom hole if that makes sense. So I'm just using my finger and um, I guess a pencil or, or my little um, pokey tool here, trying to get the different, the different pieces of ephemera to be exactly in the position where 
they're peeking out and I can see them and I think that they look good. Um, but they're also not competing too much with the test tubes. I really tried to do sort of a monochromatic thing with the labels that you see there's not a lot of color in the back. I didn't want that really distracting away from it. Even the postage stamp I use, which is a green uh, vintage uh, French stamp, even though it has some color, it's muted and it and it it doesn't stand out a hu a huge bit. I want you to see the beauty of the labels, but I don't want them to be the showstopper. I, I don't want them to distract from the hero of the piece or the focal point of the piece, which is the vials. So you're going to see me just fiddling around here, trying to get the different um, pieces of ephemera in the right spot so I can glue them down. And I'm only doing it one test tube at a time because each test tube obscures a certain part of the background. And I think without having them all in there, I would be thrown off by how it looks. So I'm trying to do it one test tube at a time. I don't remove a test tube until I'm sure of the location of the piece of ephemera that I'm putting down. I hope that, I hope that makes sense. I struggle a little bit with the circle because I really want the words in the background to show. Oh, but it's almost impossible to get it to show between the two the two test tubes. And, you know, these are the kind of details that when we're putting one of these projects together, we probably over scrutinize or I, or at least I can admit I over scrutinize. But, you know, I really feel like details matter when you're making a 3D project like this. So I put the butterfly on there just with a little bit of glue stick, nothing really permanent, just trying to get a sense of what that will look like, because that's also going to obscure part of the box. So once I am sure something is in the right place, I put it down with a glue stick, and now I'll try the test tube back in to make sure that everything is in the right spot and that I like it where it is. And I do. I think it looks good, and I'm, I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to put the sides in. So if you saw yesterday's video, I'm almost doing the opposite in this box than I did in that box. I used plain paper in the first box, yesterday's box, and I highly decorated that paper so that your eye traveled to the side. But that was because there was only one vial and I wanted the entire box to be interesting. But this box has three vials and I don't want the sides competing with the... Uh, focal point, which is the three uh, test tubes that are right in front of you. So I'm choosing to use a very uh, subtle pattern paper that's got sort of dark and uh, it's, it's a darker paper, but it's got a nice light floral in it so that it'll look pleasing to the eye, but it's not going to dry your focus there because I want the focus to be right in front. And here I'm actually showing you yesterday's box to show you that this is going to be opposite. Busy on the inside, plain on the outside. And I think I'm going to make this one busier on the outside and plainer on the inside sides. You'll, you'll see the difference when it, when it happens. So now I'm looking at the bottom of the box and I think that white is very boring. So we need to do something about that. So I'm very mindful that I want to decorate the inside of the box, but I'm I don't want to compete too much with the, the vials. So I decide I'm going to take that script stamp and I'm just going to lightly put some writing on the bottom. Uh, I always like the way that a little bit of writing or script looks on paper. I think it always adds a little bit of that um, junk journal style. So because this box is a little bit bigger, I want to make that bottom almost look like a shelf, like it's a shelf in the um, cabinet, in the naturalist's cabinet. So I decide to put some postage stamps, and lordy, I have so many postage stamps. This is just one of my boxes, and um, so I'm just picking colors that are a little bit muted, that don't, you know, they, they're pretty, but they're not going to like stand out like 
like a lot. And um, I put the test tubes in again because I need to see it as I'm building it. And I'm going to start placing the postage stamps on the shelf. And I'm going to break the postage stamps up with uh, some of the labels that I had in that digital kit that I created for this project. And I'm looking specifically for um, some labels that went on microscope slides. And they're just very plain and pretty and they have some nice script on them. And I'm going to layer those on the shelf as well. It's really hard for me to show you the, the fiddling around I do with them or the gluing in because the box has to be standing up. I would have had to have a camera in the front and then my hands would have kept going in front of the camera. So there's really no great way to do it. So I'm just going to jump ahead so that you can see it. Okay, now that the bottom of the shelf is done, we're going to move on. I'm going to focus a little bit on this butterfly. I want to put him on and I, I start putting him on with Fabri-Tac and then I decide that I feel like just the butterfly sitting there isn't enough. And I think I'd like to add some moss. I think that will make it blend much better with the project. So I grab my bag of moss and decide on the natural color. And I'm just going to put a little bit of the natural moss and kind of tatty it up a little bit. And then I'll put the butterfly on top. And I'm not going to press it completely flat. I want to make the butterfly look a little 3D. So I'm going to put a lot of moss on each side of the wings. So the wings are in a slight V. So it doesn't look so static. It looks like maybe the butterfly is real. Maybe he is about to flap his wings. I, I, I want the, those wings to be on an angle like a butterfly would be in real life. So I'm just going to attach that butterfly and uh, the name of the butterfly has already been put on the background underneath. And then I'm going to add a little bit of moss to the opposite corner and I've added a, a postage stamp there to just to play it off and now it's time to start decorating the outside. That white paper that looks like wood is just way too plain. So I'll just be adding some more ephemera on the outside of the box and I decide to take some washi tape, uh, the Tim Holtz washi tape that has like ledger looking on it or script and I'm going to go around the outside and sort of frame that edge with the washi tape. And then I'll put the specimen label on top of it. I just think it has a much better look. And I realize I really should have the paper that goes on the back on so that I can um, press that washi tape over. So I trim it. I'm going to glue it on. And there will be a very tiny gap between where the back paper is and the side papers and that washi tape will bridge that gap and what I'll end up doing is taking a time out from decorating the sides so that I can concentrate on going around the edge with washi tape and filling that gap. And here you'll see me just going around the edges and just filling in with the washi tape. Now I've taken out the uh, test tubes because I need to put washi tape over that top piece and it's going to go a little bit over the circle. So I'm going to take a pair of um, little tiny scissors and I'm just going to snip that washi tape in a bunch of little places in those holes so that I can fold it down. And you'll, you'll see me do that. Um, I just wanted to explain it before you see it. And I'm just smoothing down that washi tape, making sure that there's no gaps and that it's smooth and that it looks good and trying to be as technical as I can. And here we are. Here I am snipping. I knew it was coming. Um, I'm only doing that because there's, it would have been impossible to cut that washi tape out in a circle. And I, I also don't want it to keep the test tubes from going in and out. So I'm just figured that was the best way to handle it. 
So now I am just going to take those labels, just little ones that I pick, and I'm going to glue them to the top. I like putting them on angles. I like folding them over, uh, making it a little bit interesting. I'm using a similar label as one that is already on a test tube to paint it a little bit more consistent. And it's just fun to try to figure out which pieces of ephemera are going to look the best. And I really just love these field labels so much. I love this stamp set. Um, you know, we invest a lot in our tools and some things we don't use very often and some things become our go-to and I just love the stamp set probably because I love specimens in nature so much and I find myself doing similar projects whether it's in paper or something 3D like this. I just love the subject matter. I'm, I'm really finding that that's kind of my thing. That's kind of my aesthetic is that I love using nature with my paper crafts and in my projects. That is just my go-to, whether it's mushrooms or leaves or pressed flowers. Um, it's, it's just where I'm happy. Now I've added a little label to the back and I'm going to do something that I oftentimes forget to do, which is sign my work. I am horrible at that. I don't know why I forget. So I want to make sure I put a label on the back so I could date it and sign it. And we are moving right along. And at this point now, I'm just doing final little touches on the box. I'm going to take out that stamp that does uh, splatters again because I really think it's effective to have black ink splatters. They catch the eye, they add contrast, and I love with the stamp that I can be so precise. I, I, I do like being free with it sometimes, but in this particular project, I wanted to make sure I could control that. So now we're moving on from the box and we are just going to finalize the decorations on the test tubes. I had already done the tops of a couple of these test tubes, and um, but I hadn't specifically chosen them for this particular box. And once I did, I decided I needed to add a little bit of extra love to them. So this first uh, test tube, I, I, the little amount that sticks over the top I think is too boring. So I get a little piece of that encyclopedia paper and I'm just going to wrap the top of it, similarly to what I did in the box yesterday, except a little bit thinner. I do make sure that I like the words that are on there, that they're scientific, so that they'll have that same feel. And I'm just going to wrap the top of the test tube, and then um, put that, when it's sitting back in the box, it'll be above the box, which I really like. It'll fill in that gap. So I'm happy with that. The second test tube already has a label and is, I'm pretty happy with that one. I don't need to change any of that. At least I don't think I do right now. And this one has nothing on it. It's completely plain. I really like this little uh, label that identifies the specimen maker or a company in London that did a lot of microscope slides. And I just trim it down and then rub the edges in ink. And I'm going to try to figure out where I want to put it. Do I want to put it high? Do I want to put it low? Do I want to put it above the box? And like anything else in our paper craft world, a lot of times you're just going on gut. You're looking where your eye rests. You're seeing the direction and the competition of the elements. And it just feels right for me to put it on the top so that it's almost a pattern. The two labels on the left and the right hand test tube are about the same eye level. And then the middle one has the label above the box. So I like how it's like down, up, down. I mean, these are the, these are the decisions that I love to scrutinize over. These are the decisions that get my problem solving going and, and it makes me, I don't know, I just love making all those choices. So now I am just finishing up and looking at what else I need to do. And we are about ready for the hot wax, which is really the final, the final step. So I'm going to light my candle. I'm going to get my hot wax going. 
As you can see, two of the test tubes already have their wax tops, but this last one does not. So I'm going to use the same color wax as I did on the first one. Again, sort of a pattern, copper, white, copper. And I'm going to wrap it in twine like I did with the other two because I want it to be consistent. I'll use my Fabri-Tac for that. And you're going to see that what I decide to do with this one is I decide that I'm going to go really heavy on the wax. I want a lot of drippage and I'm going to hope that I'll be able to add lots of layers of wax and lots of dripping. I really want to make sure that twine is set before I do that because once there's wax all over that twine, you, you can't change your twine. So now I'm going to stir it up, make sure it's nice and smooth, and I'm going to put a really generous dollop on the top and uh, make my first layer. I th truth be told, I wasn't sure that this there was going to be another layer, so I definitely used the wax seal on it. I wasn't 100% sure how thick I wanted to go, but if I decided that this was enough, I didn't want to waste the opportunity to put the seal in it. So I made my impression, and now I'm going to start layering all of the um, drips. I do make a little bit of a mistake here. And that is, after I dripped the wax, I turned the test tube sideways, which made the drip go sideways. So it's really important when you're pouring wax to make sure that you keep your test tube nice and straight. So now I am melting a little bit more wax because I want to make sure that I can add some additional drips to the test tube, which is what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to try to keep it straight up because I've learned my lesson. Oh, and as you can see, I also added a whole other layer on the top because I wanted it to be, to be taller. And I'm just going to keep adding wax because I want each test tube to be similar, but I want them each to have a little bit of a personality. So this is my drippy test tube. And as you could see, I pinched off the crooked drip because it was going to drive me crazy. And yes, you're going to see me go back and actually do a third layer. This is definitely going to be my drippy, drippy test tube. And uh, at some point, I'm going to feel like I have enough. <laughs> Apparently, it just wasn't then. So now, this is how silly I am with details. I want to have a couple drips on the box so it looks like the wax dripped on the box. So I had to go over there and make a drip on the box. And I do end up adding a second one later. So the white test tube in the middle, I have this, I don't know if you can tell, there's like a little dent. It doesn't go, the wax doesn't go all the way around. And that's going to bother me. So I just know I need to put another thin layer of wax and cover that little part the little cork that's showing through. Oh, you just saw me put that little second drip there. It was on the desk and I decided I would transfer it to the box. I'll glue it on while my white wax is is melting. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to put another layer of white on the white test tube because it bothers me that the cork is is showing a little bit. And uh, I just want it to be a little bit thicker because the other two test tubes are thicker. I, I feel like it's going to stand out. So I'm just going to um, melt that wax and then I'm going to pour it on top and make another impression. And as I'm sitting here pondering my wax tops, I decide that I would like to highlight the impression with gilding wax. So I believe that will be my last step after I make this white impression. So let me grab my mushroom stamp, make sure it's on the right direction, because that would really be a bummer. And I am, yay, it came out good. And now I believe I will gra grab my gilding wax, get it a little bit of wet, get it a little wet, and then I'm just going to highlight the 
the relief parts of the stamp, so the impression parts, and a little bit around the edge. It just gives the wax a little bit of dimension, and uh, I feel like it makes the tops of the test tubes look a little better. So as I'm finishing up the wax, I'm just reflecting on the fact that when Yuta sent me the steam clay, I knew I wanted to do something special. I knew I wanted it to be woodland, I wanted it to be whimsical and about nature, but I really didn't know the direction I was going on. And as this idea developed, I really didn't have anything to base it on. Like I didn't have a prototype. And I'm really, really happy that um, this is the outcome. Like it's exactly what I pictured in my head. And the last detail I'm going to put on before it's done is just a couple metal corners to balance out um, the moss on the opposing side. And then I think this particular um, shadow box is done. The naturalist cabinet is not this one box. It's an idea I have in my head of all the things that would be in a sort of magical, historical, you know, um, nature, you know, what do they call it? Natural history museum or like I picture like a old naturalist in his study and he has all these great specimens around and he has a cabinet that he fills with things that he's found over the years and this is just you know this is me this is me in a box and I, I can just picture the study and the wall it's hanging on or the or the cabinet that it's in I feel like it there's a little bit of magic to it even though it's based off of nature and I could definitely be see it being used even with, you know, Yuta said something about like a witch's, like a pocketary or something, like green witch type of idea. These two boxes were so much fun to make. And I really loved sharing the process, my idea with you. And I really hope you like it too. I hope it inspires you to think about collecting things around you and making little displays, um, bringing a little of the outdoors and a little magic to your home or to gifts. And I'd really love to hear what you think. If you liked this video and you were inspired by anything that I did, I hope that you will like it. I would love for you to comment and I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you stopping by and sharing the Naturalist Cabinet series with me. It was an absolute pleasure. Thanks for stopping by. Until the next time, I'll see you later.